Good, good morning. Welcome to OldStMary's.com, a ministry of Old St. Mary's Parish in the South Loop of Chicago. We are happy to welcome you to this morning's 8.30 Mass, where we uh, celebrate a special feast day today. We celebrate the feast of the Apostles Philip and James, or James of Alphaeus. And so as we gather and pray, these are the holy men whom the Lord chose in his own perfect love, to them he gave eternal glory. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we draw ever closer to our Lord, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare for these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us each year, with the feast day of the apostles Philip and James, grant us through their prayers a share in the passion and resurrection of your only begotten Son, so that we may merit to behold you for eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, of which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once, most of whom are still living though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their message goes out to all the earth. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Their message goes out to all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Philip, whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have you been with me for so long a time you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. So Philip and James are always paired together. They always come up at this point in the Easter season, although the Easter season slides a little bit left and right around them. But the invitation for us to see apostles during the season of Easter just reconfirms what the message of Easter is all about. The message, the gospel, the good news, that understanding of Christ and then living out that commitment. So Philip is, is probably the best known of the two apostles in today's, uh, in today's feast day. Philip, we, we have a clear indication of Jesus going to him, discovering him. He's, he's like right there with Peter and Andrew and James and John. You know, he's, he's right there. Um, and so he obviously shows up in the gospel today, and it's not his first appearance. But James of Alphaeus, not to be confused with James the greater, James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee. This is James of Alphaeus. And if you look him up, you will find that different teachings in the church say different things about who he is. So as, as is not unexpected with multiple names, you know, so you've got James the greater and James the less, usually in the list of apostles. But the question always comes up, Is this the same James that is referred to as the brother of the Lord? Is this the same James that was leader of the early church in Jerusalem? And there are conflicting reports. Imagine that. Not a pure sense of who James was except an apostle. Except an apostle. So what makes an apostle an apostle? The apostles are obviously those people who walked with Jesus, who got a chance to live with him for three, four years and and see the miracles and and understand his message as it was given to them. 
And then they went out, and what, what is, and why we're in red today, is because all of the apostles except John, as far as we know, were martyred for their faith. There, there's some confusion about where James of Alpheus meets his end. Probably the one that most comes up is the belief that he was stoned to death. But he's also, interestingly, patron saint of the dying. An interesting twist for us. So someone who brings hope to people who's... who's uh, James is the one who kept his head below... Uh, below level, so people weren't always seeing him. So maybe his invitation to us is when we're living out the gospel message, we don't have to be the dramatic ones. We don't have to be the ones that everyone sees all the time. We, we, can, we can fly below the radar. We, we can do our good deeds, and, and we can still tell people in, in different ways and at different times and, and in, in, in short venues about Christ and his risenness. Because it is in doing that, in sharing the good news about who Christ is, that we begin to see more and more exactly who Christ is, because he's living his life out through us. And as we continue to proclaim that message about who Jesus is, then what is contended with in the gospel today, we begin to see the love of the Father played out through us as hope for those who need it, as help for those who are also in need of it. So may God continue to bless us in our journey of Easter and our continued ability to go out to all the world and tell the good news. Let us together raise our prayers. We pray for all of those who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes down to us from the apostles. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our world, that things may be open to the grace of God and the ways that God gives us blessing to understand the right ways to work together and build up all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are sick or suffering in any way for their healing. We pray to the Lord. We pray that severe diseases may be overcome. Cancer, COVID, other things that are out there, chronic conditions for our understanding of those and for their overcoming. We pray to the Lord. We also remember all those people who at this time of year are going through transition, transitions to school, transitions to jobs, transitions to other places to live. For all of those people in transition, we pray to the Lord. We also pause a moment because we know there are those people who are with us online. They get a chance to raise their prayers out loud in their home and let us consider what they may be asking. For all of their prayers, we pray to the Lord. And for everyone who has asked us for prayers, all those who have promised to pray for us, those people who have no one to pray for them, those people who are at crossroads in their lives this day, we pray to the Lord. And we also remember all those who have died. I'm especially thinking of my dad today. This is the second anniversary of his death and for all of the family and friends that you know who have died, especially in the last year or two, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and ever-loving God, accept these prayers that we voice, accept also the prayers that are in our hearts, those known to us, but most of all, those known to you alone. Grant all we truly need through Christ our Lord.
You are blessed, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. You are blessed, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, receive the offerings we bring for the feast day of the apostles Philip and James, and bestow on us religion pure and undefiled through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again 
and offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, especially Philip and James, and the martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's in some special way offer peace to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. So just a reminder to follow the directions of the ushers as as they invite you forward and sanitize your hands to rub that in. Come forward, receive in your hands and then move to the six feet away mark, the yellow, uh, yellow decals on the floor, draw your mask down, consume, and then put the mask up and return to your places. Thank you for your help during this pandemic time. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall.